I'm a bad brother. He's a sweet soul. Ah, oh, yeah. Hello, everyone. This is Midlife Madness. I'm Troy Hill. Today, we got Lisa Lee. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you. Okay, we got Lee Bolton, Wesley Snipes in the house. How are you doing today? Lee is doing great. How are you, okay. Troy? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking, Lee. And we also got Billy Joe, a.k.a. Billy Wade. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. I'm wonderful. Okay, she's doing great and wonderful. And we also have the most of <laughs> Mr. D. Lou. How are you doing today, sir? I'm blessed, 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 blessed. Oh, the remix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's coming out on the Nights at the Sound Table mixtape. Coming to a... <laughs> Coming to a, some media format near you here somewhere. in the future. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. The remix, but, um, the blessed remix. Yeah, we got five different versions of it. One, one Michael McDonald and Ron Isley sings it. Um, but that's but that's another time. Um, <laughs> um, today we're talking about work issues. You know, we all we've been in the workforce for several years. We've all had ups and downs throughout the workforce. Some things are great accomplishments. We were rewarded for our efforts. And sometimes we had to deal with just things that were just straight up crap. So let's go ahead and kick it over to Lisa Lee. What is one of the things in just in the work-life experience that you've dealt with in time that you either like a lot or you don't care for at all? Um, I think the one that stands out for me the most was I was working for a company that was in the process of going public. And there's a, if you've never been through that, um, there's a lot of work on the front end. And um, I was the um, director of HR. And so a lot of the, you know, labor statistics and top reports were having to, you know, they would come to my boss and then my boss would come to me and I would run them, get them back to you or whatever. Well, then after the, you know, once everything went public, you know, the IPO was launched, then there were IPO bonuses. Um, and I got the list and then I had to go through and verify some things and then send it over to payroll. And mm -hmm. my name was not on the list. And <gasps> I, I was what? like, but I, but I did all the work all that the this work. department had to turn in. Like it was me. And then the fact that it was handed to me to approve and then send on, I was like, and I think that was my, that like sticks with me, like from a corporate America, like that's typical in corporate America. And so that wasn't very pleasant, but you know, I, no, I can see close. that. I can you see know. that because you're going through all this effort to get this stuff done, and then all of a sudden, next, um, you know, it's you, you know, and and I mean, I know you're a good person, but I've dealt with people that weren't so good, you know, in the workforce before. So I got a funny story to tell you, um, with that, where they had they were like they let go like 20 people in a day in one of my previous places of employment. And they sent this lady all over the place finding people to take them to that big room so they could get terminated, you know? And then she came up to me, you know, and she's like, have you seen so-and-so? I'm like, oh yeah, he just walked over that way. You know, <laughs> so they went and so she took this like supposedly the last person. Then my boss came up to me is like, have you seen so-and-so? Which is the woman going around getting all these people leading them to the room. She was uh, the 21st. They sat up there oh. and let her drag everybody else into that office to get oh. fired and ultimately get fired at 21 because that was her last duty for her position. And she was a horrible person. So she used to throw people up underneath the bus all the time and do all this type, type of stuff. So sadly, I was kind of I was kind of I was kind of happy about that. But you know, I mean it's just that's just the way things happen sometimes. But yeah, that's what this job did. Let her out as a headhunter, so to speak, getting all these people just to be ultimately let, found later to be let go as well. So mm -hmm. um, how about, how about you, Billy? Something um, about, something about like, work. What is the question? <laughs> well, just something about work. work. It, could be, it could be several things, things in the workplace that kind of makes things, make things complicated for you. You now, know, I am blessed with a wonderful job. I've been here for like almost 10 years now. And I cannot complain. I have the best boss. I have the best people that work for me. I, I just, I can't complain. These people, I got to handpick because I interviewed them. So I got to handpick them, you know, and they, I have an awesome team. It sucks. And I want to complain so bad about something that I really can't. 
I have a great That's job. Awesome. No, that's awesome, yeah, and I, I love to hear all that. my all my pizza job. <laughs> so yeah, so <laughs> so she is the one percent in the the perfect work scenario and I stuff. Know. Everything's like yeah. roses and rainbows and stuff. So I'm, I'm happy I at least can't I know somebody that's in that type of position. Um, how about you, Mr. Lee Bolton? Things that you that might complicate the workplace or experience that you may have in the workplace that didn't go down the what the way you wanted it to go down. Micromanagement. Hate it. Hate it. Period. Just don't you got a job to do, do your job. Everybody got a task, everybody got a chore. Do yours and don't worry about the next. Period. Right. Yeah. I just hate micromanagement. Yeah. What what if their title was mi micromanager? Would that would that make it different <laughs> for you? If, if the title would was it make it easier? Yes, I think it would because everybody, <laughs> a lot of people carry that title and don't need it anyway. But yeah, if they had a title like micromanager, I could take it better. But <laughs> if you got know. eight or nine hands at something and you know your job, it's just like, yeah, I don't, I don't do well with micromanagement. Yeah, I, I can relate to that, too. And I think several people can relate to that as well. Um, uh, what about you, uh, Mr. Lewis? I'd have to say um, discrimination to a point. Um, I worked at one place and there was actually Ed was working with me there, too, and stuff. And Brian also through, for that company. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a deal with um, all of a sudden we had a, a different regional manager that came in that was just trying to bring her people from her area up here and mm -hmm. become the, and pay them a little bit less than what we were making and get rid of all of us. And it was just the devious me measures that she was taking, you know, trying to get people to quit or, or get fired and stuff like that. It just really was, was Dang. some BS. Mm. No, yeah, I yeah. Okay. I remember there was, a, you know, there was a situation like my, um, my middle son, he was, he was just born you know, 18 years ago and stuff. And um, he was in the hospital when he was born. And I remember this lady calling me saying, you know, I took some time off and she was just like, well, why are you taking this much time off? You know, blah, 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 this and that. And basically said, why don't they just put a needle in his head and get him, get him right and stuff. I was like, I'm done. Wow. I was like, I, I, yeah. Oh I, I, had to say. I was like, that was it. So, you know, just like that type of stuff that you don't get to see, you know, the, the, the moves that they're making in the background that, that they're trying to set you up for. Just kind of like what you were saying where that lady ended up firing all the people and then all of a sudden, you know, she's the one getting fired. So yeah. it's just stuff that just gets on my nerves. Yeah, I mean, yeah, discrimination in the workplace can, it can suck. And let me be clear to you listeners, we, we like you very much and stuff and continue to subscribe to our channel. Keep on clicking the notification bell for up-to-date content. But when we say discrimination, we're not talking about like, we're not just talking about necessarily color. We're talking about sex. We're talking about, we're talking about all those different things while a person might not particularly like you and treat you poorly in the workplace. Just for clarification, because I've been through that. Have you guys ever worked with the guy that, or the guy or woman that's kind of like, you know, they'll drop you, the name dropper. Be like, oh, I don't know about that guy, you know, and then it kind of ends up, even what they're saying is 100% BS, but when you say stuff enough to certain people, it becomes the truth because people don't want to sit up there and try and do their own research because they're too lazy. You guys ever encountered that person? You know, kind of wave their hands like, I don't know about that situation. You kind of just dropping your name where you didn't have nothing to do with anything. Yeah, I ran into that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, I back, yeah, the name, the the name dropper the, sucks. But, yeah, the I mean, discrimination yeah. stuff, though. Mm -hmm. Darius was it was it a skin color deal with yours or no 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 she <laughs> no <laughs> like I said it was uh it was because the managers in this area were making more than what the managers in her area were making oh and when she okay was moving up here she wanted to bring her people pay them less save the company money and make it like she's out. doing something yeah I okay. mean, there, there were a couple of them. I remember there was a, a female that ended up quitting, just bought a house in a different area, mm. you know, to, to take over that office. And, you know, like, yeah, she ended up making this woman quit. And I was like, wow, that, that's just going a little bit too far. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it's crazy huh. because it's like a lot of things you can't share 
amongst your coworkers. You know, you want to have a love of the quorum with people. You want to sit up there and just don't make it seem like you're a robot. But as sometimes it's the best thing you can do is be a robot. You know, it's like people at my job, they don't have no clue what I do outside of my job. And I'm never going to, they can just sit there and think I'm old man Hill. And I'm just getting to work at six o'clock in the morning so as far as I'm concerned. And I don't care, you know, because there's some situations, I've been in work situations where things are obviously going wrong. And like, it could be like several employees can see the same thing and they can go to HR and HR don't do nothing. Not because it's the right thing to do is because maybe the HR person secretly like dating the guy that's causing all the problems on the floor. I've right. been through that, you know? So, <laughs> you know, dating in the workplace sometimes can be an issue. Has anybody else had a, situ- a situation like that? I mean, dating I in the with- workplace? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't have an issue with people dating the warehouse. Me personally, I probably wouldn't. But if it's like causing strife amongst employees and stuff, I think that's when it does become an issue. Well, and I think no matter how much the two people that are involved think that they're, you know, keeping it under wraps, like, you know, I used to work for a startup company. And if you've never worked for a startup company, that is basically like Sodom and Gomorrah. Like it is. Mm-hmm holy walls wheels off and we'd be sitting in meetings you know at the you know director level or high you know and you everybody knew like it's not like you know people thought they were hiding stuff but everybody knew and then it was Mm -hmm. fine as long as everybody was getting along but the minute there was strife and then the two of you had to be sitting in the same room still trying to solve a problem Mm -hmm. as you know it just it was it was just a disaster so Um, you know, and I've been in, you know, been in HR for, uh, you know, several years. And so you're privy to a lot of information that, (laughs) you know, you wouldn't have otherwise. So it goes on a lot more than you would think, honestly. Yeah. You see, like, Mm -hmm. you know, people like a mind level haven't worked in HR, you kind of find out at the, you know, after the fact, and then you connect everything together. And it's kind of like that, that twist movie ending. You're like, wonder how everything went wrong and everything was like right out in front of your face the whole damn time. So uh, what's, what's your thoughts on that, Darius? Dating in the workplace, um, I mean, it's not something that I would do. Um, not saying that I haven't done it when I was younger, um, but, you know, definitely being older and stuff like that, you just I look at it differently. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, like you said, I mean, I've seen situations where some people, they, they get certain preferable treatment because they are dating a manager or something like that, or, you know, um, doing a little bit more <laughs> on the side <laughs> than they should be and stuff. But, uh, right, right. <laughs> you know, but. Um, Extra just, credit. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, Ooh, you can I did that. not have sex <laughs> relations with that woman. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of those situations, like, uh, what what do you do in that point? You know, like, I, I got a question for you, Lisa, since you've been in HR and stuff like that. Like, have you seen that happen a lot? Let's say, like, on the ma- on the manager's level, where there's two managers that are talking to each other or something, and things, you know, like they're you know getting certain treatment or just. You mm-hmm. know, well, the thing for me is the the one when I finally when I because my career mostly was in accounting and finance. And so I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't delving into that a lot, but once I transitioned over into HR nowadays, it has changed to where there are specific things written in most handbooks that will say, um, and not, not even, even if it's not specifically written in the handbook, it's typically, it's a labor law that says, um, typically you, it's, I don't think it's illegal, but like you're not supposed to date your subordinate. But I have seen situations where like, you know, let's say at the director level might be messing around with the C-suite level. So like the CEO or the CFO or the, you know, whatever, one of the chief titles. And yeah, insane. Like everybody, it wasn't maybe that they were getting preferential treatment, but maybe, I guess it is. Cause like their expense reports would be approved for, you know, mm, yeah. shopping trips and bar tabs that were two thousand dollars and things like that that wouldn't normally be approved but you know Mm -hmm. so it's a slippery slope though i definitely yeah yeah. 
Yeah, I think between two responsible adults, if you're going to do that and stuff, you know, you're going to maintain, you're going to separate the two. You know, you you handle your work business and your personal things. Like, I mean, that's one thing, you know, but if you're literally like conspiring, trying to push somebody up to the top of a job and stuff, I don't think that's appropriate. All of a sudden, this person has all of a sudden out of nowhere, they have like this unlimited like uh, set of skill sets that nobody ever knew of before. And all of a sudden they get like this management <laughs> role or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of, that's kind of BS. Um, what other type of work issues can prevent, you know, things that you in your work life that you experience that can kind of um, hamper things, you know, for your, as far as your perception for that job goes, uh, Lee. Well, work overload for one, you know, if you're a good employee, they try to add more to you. And if you, yes. um, if you ain't willing to do it, and most of the time we're not, cause we trying to get a higher position. So we just mm -hmm. take what they give us, but yeah, you gotta be careful because I mean, it sucks cause you, you're a hard worker, but then you gotta be careful too, because you don't want too much on your plate because most of the time you ain't gonna get compensated for it. Not the way you no. feel you should. So right. no, and, and, and then when the extra responsibilities don't get done, you know, then they're questioning why it wasn't done. Cause you know, I've been in positions where I've worked, you know, we have a team of people. Then one, one day I get to work and I'm the team at that point. So now I gotta take over all the responsibilities. So if something falls beneath the cracks, well, I mean, why didn't it get done? Well, why did you let three or four people go? Because I'm only one person. And I only could be in one place at one time. So I've dealt with stuff like that too. Uh, Lisa Lee. So what I, what I would, like, this can be like the, me as the HR whatever person, but like, I would, mm. you know, give advice to the people that are listening to this. Like, if you're put in that situation where you're starting to be asked to take on more and more, like go to your direct supervisor and just be very clear asking questions about what the expectations are. Even mm -hmm. go as to, so far as to ask for it in writing. And I know that mm -hmm. feels awkward. And a lot of times, like Lee said, we're, we're like naturally, you know, inclined to just say yes, yes, yes. Cause a lot of times we're, you know, we're climbing that corporate ladder, but mm -hmm. don't be afraid to ask for clarification in writing about your responsibilities. And in that particular case, Troy, like, they ended up getting rid of three people. Mm -hmm. Like, if that happens, then it's okay to go back and say, okay, I understand now that, you know, this work was being done by four. Now it's being done by one. Tell them your concerns. Make sure you get everything in writing. It, that doesn't mean that you won't be reprimanded and or even terminated. It just means if you had to take it to another, um, like, legal if you had to take a legal route or whatever you've got to you kind of got a paper trail yeah. yeah so so i mean yeah i think that's a i think that's a you know valid valid thing to try to do but but the dynamic of the the game has changed with covid at this particular moment you know i mean to me the, i mean to me i would probably be more inclined to do something like that when there wasn't like a covid going on right now you see what i'm saying because it seems like Okay, well, hell, if he doesn't want it, we'll just go ahead and get somebody else. You know, it's easy. Everybody's looking for work. I mean, does that make any sense? Or Yeah, it does. I would still recommend sending something in email. And it's all about that tone in that email. If you're, act, mm -hmm. if you're sending an email, it's going to be date and time stamped. It's all about your tone. A ask the question in such a manner that it, it looks like you're wanting to do the best job you can and you need more info to be able to do that. Not mm -hmm. in a manner like, this is some BS. I don't want to do all this extra work, but mm -hmm. like, Hey, I see that this is being added to my plate. I want to understand the priority of the tasks or, yeah. you know, things like that. So then even if they don't respond, you've got a date and timestamp of when you ask it again, mm -hmm. it's not going to, it may not prevent anything from happening from a termination or a reassignment or something like that. It just means you have a paper trail mm -hmm. of conversations. Okay. All right. I mean, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that, Darius? Oh, um, I mean, it, it definitely makes sense and stuff. You know, I'm just kind of at the point in life where I'm, I'm just, I'll, I'll slide the paper over to the person. <laughs> just telling them, hey, this is what you got right here. I, if, if it's not on here, I ain't doing it. 
Because I'm just, I'm fed up, man. That's just where I'm at in life. I'm fed up with a lot of the BS, the corporate BS and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, know. That, that's my stand. Uh, I know Billy, Billy's in the perfect situation right now. I was kind of, I was kind of in that a few years ago, but then the company ended up closing. So that, that definitely hurt. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, there's been a, a lot of closures. There's more businesses that are closed. Uh, I mean, it's off topic, but I mean, you know, there's no like corporate, there's like no chain video or family or a movie rental place anymore. Family video. They just recently closed all their stores. They're going to really shut down that too. So, you know, it's, it's just it's like crazy, like things that you would think of that were open and seem to be striving and they're just like defunct and now no longer going to exist. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, talking about COVID and just work in general, do you guys have any concerns about the, the field that you're in, um, Lee? No, I've been working since it all started. So, and busy, busy, busy. Um, so I don't have any concerns. Mm-hmm. I kind of was hoping I'd get a little break, but it, it's not going to happen. Um, and I yeah. work in the food industry. So, yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I guess you could say I've been blessed. I've been yeah, blessed. No, you definitely have. The you remix. Have. You know, then, right? The <laughs> remix. <laughs> well, no, it's just like, there's like so many different things because I, I mean, last, this time last year, you know, I was having my Rocky moment. I started with a great company and everything, you know, it was the entertainment industry, family entertainment. And um, once COVID hit, you know, it just messed up everything because, you know, people, they can't pay their employees if you can't have the parks and stuff open. Yeah. You know, so if you're not, and so I made it to the final list of all the cuts, but, you know, it just didn't work out that way. But now I'm like, I feel like I'm in some place that is stable, you know, I mean, because it's, it's Texas and it's a, the AC industry. And, and I mean, they're always doing their maintenance and stuff like that now this time of season. But, you know, like a month or two from now, it's going to be just, just busy as hell. So. And plus, mm-hmm. it's seven minutes away from my house, so I'm definitely enjoying that. It's hey, nice yeah. going home. It's nice That's to go awesome. home at lunch and have me a, a quick thirty minute nap, you know. And because <laughs> I do that, I do that every day, you know. But um, um I mean, yo, Darius, you I mean, can take you a thirty nap. minute nap and just be cool. You can just sleep for thirty minutes. I have to. I don't got a choice. <laughs> you know. I mean, I mean, I don't have a choice in the matter that I got to get my ass back up, basically. You know, but. And there's been some rough goes at it. Yeah, there's been some rough goes. Yeah, I made, I, it, back, I made it back to work safely. Um, uh, Darius, what about you and uh, your industry? Because I know um, we're not in the same industry, but you've dealt with like the same kind of stuff that I've dealt with over the year, over the year, you know, due to COVID. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely impacted, um, you know, the industry that I was in and stuff. I've actually recently switched um, careers into a different field and stuff like that. So. That, that's been a blessing. But um, yeah, the industry I was in, it definitely impacted it a lot. Um, you know, the, the financing of automobiles and stuff like that and uh, mm-hmm. loans and everything that it took a big hit. And, mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately, one, the, one of the um, companies that I had recently worked for, they had to close four offices because mm-hmm. of it. Um, you know, it, it's definitely something that uh, impacts that industry seriously um a lot of other industries too i mean the whole country is going Mm -hmm. through it right now yeah yeah um lisa your industry is probably uh stable i mean hail season is going to be coming right around the corner here real soon is this what is this the cow tipping industry you're an ass no um No, so I'm also, we also deal with new construction and while the interest right now, especially here in Texas, Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the interest rates are low federally, but Texas is growing because there's no state tax here and Mm -hmm. um, Toyota opened their North American headquarters here like two and a half, maybe three years ago. And a lot of people- It's a nice nice facility too. It's really really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brought a lot of people from California in and they're used to the property values and prices in California and they were coming out here and they were buying a main residential, you know, a main living place to live and then a rental house. That's how much they could afford. And so house housing prices have skyrocketed in this area where I live. And then 
so as long as interest rates stay low, they'll keep building new construction. I mean, we're, we were averaging, you know, and we're small, we're a small, small company. We were averaging 10 to 15 new construction houses a week. So mm -hmm. wow. yeah, that's kind of like with the, uh, my industry, cause we're doing new installs and stuff on several different properties and stuff too, you know, new air conditioning used for new homes and doing retros and doing terms. It's like, it's like two or three stages to the process. So mm -hmm. I mean, the, the work is, I mean, it's still, I mean, it's still, it's still, they say it's surprisingly slow, which I'm very busy every single day, but yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's a good industry to be in. Um, how about you, Billy? I work in the medical device industry. So we make uh, medical devices that when people have surgeries that they need. So, you know, um, it has affected us actually, because when, uh, when COVID first hit and they shut the country down, they stopped all elective surgeries. And so people weren't going to get elective surgeries. And over the summertime, what it did was, um, thankfully, it took us down to part time. So I was only working 20 hours a week for the whole summer, mm -hmm. which was awesome because I got to pick my schedule. And I was I was working Monday, Tuesday, half a day, Wednesday. So I had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off the whole summer, mm -hmm. which was great. And we also got to collect the unemployment then. So it worked out well financially for us you know, mm -hmm. over the summer. But yeah, it did affect um, when it, that was over the summer. When COVID first hit, I was essential. We worked. I had the letter. They gave mm -hmm. us all the letter where we could vote and, you know, um, because of the rioting too. So, but it did affect mm -hmm. the medical device industry as well. Minnesota is huge mm -hmm. for that. We are huge for the medical device industry mm -hmm. and it shut us all down to part time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm familiar with that industry because uh, when I lived in Wisconsin, I actually worked for GE uh, with the female patient monitoring systems and stuff. So, yeah, actually, it was it was a great job. You know, it really, really was. You know, since I said the name of the company, I guess I should say how great it was and stuff before, you know, I get like <laughs> litigation. <laughs> so, it was great. I loved it. But, um, That's not the one where they fired everyone, is it? <laughs> um, no, well, it was. There's a story to it. There's there's a story. But um, uh -oh. <laughs> I can't share that on the program, there, but there is a story. But um, <laughs> we've just about out of time today. Um, again, I certainly enjoyed the conversation talking about work and just things that work could get like, I don't know, kind of just give you a hassle. Um, continue to subscribe to the channel. Continue to hit the notification button. So you'll be updated on our most current content. Um, what do you have to say to the people, Darius? Just want to tell everybody we appreciate you. And, you know, like Troy said, continue to subscribe, like, share, and stick with us as much as possible. Everybody, much love to you. And let's kick it over to Mr. Wesley Snipes. When's that new Blade movie coming out? <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to answer, but I can't. Um, <laughs> just to the fans, to the people, be just be that positivity, be that light for someone else. Um, Troy said this many moons ago, and he, he says it now and again, you know, hold that door open for somebody or just shoot them a smile or, hey, how are you doing or how's your day? You know, and most people aren't afraid of Troy anyway because he's a softy, but yeah, just be kind. Spread positivity, period. I love all you, especially the ones here in this cast, especially my country ass homie, Lisa Lee Weatherly. <laughs> um, since he kicked it over to you, what do you have, Lisa? I mean, yeah, the same. I mean, I feel like um, if you're listening to this, um, you know, you survived the craziest year of all of our lives and, you know, know that each single person on this broadcast you know we care about you you matter to us even if we don't know you um you're on this platform for a reason so um reach out you know we say it a lot we mean it um even if it's like you know questions like this like sometimes you're in a workplace you know work workplace situation and you just you have a question but you're not comfortable going to hr you know reach out to me anytime or you know any of these people you know any of the people on here that you may not have a direct connect to me just reach out to them and they'll you know but um you know Life is too short not to be happy every single day about one, at least one thing. So, you know, choose your path every day and just make them, you know, maximize each day. That's it. Okay. Very, very good stuff. Let's go ahead and hear what Billy Wade has to say to the people. Billy Wade be dubbed. Let's go. <laughs> 
I completely, you guys killed it. Um, I agree with everything, the kindness, be kind to one another, treat each other with respect. You never know. You never know what's going on in someone's life. You don't know if this is the last time you're going to see that person ever. You just never know. So just love one, love one another. And my motto for this year, I don't make resolutions, but I, I miss that show. But my motto for this year is YOLO. I am going to YOLO the hell out of 21. And I think uh, everyone is, what else YOLO does stand for? What the hell is YOLO? <laughs> I, I think I, you I, I, think I saw that on the Cracker Jack box. Opened up the prize. You only no live once. You do that. I mean, don't be afraid to take chances, to try different things. To, you never know, you know? I just, like Lisa said, take advantage of every moment. Just love one another and be kind to each other. That's it. That's my opinion. Oh, <laughs> um, I, I like to thank everybody for... I would just like to thank everybody to listen that listens into the program. Uh, much love. Remember, show some kindness to one another. And just a random act of kindness can change somebody's day. Life is short. Show mm -hmm. some love. And the famous words of Apollo Creed, there is no tomorrow.